it's a straight line. Okay, that sounds familiar. That okay. sounds, that's it. <laughs> so, th so this is where I would ask, it's okay, do you want more information on this? And let's just say you did for a moment. I sure. would draw a graph like this and I would say, is this a function? And I would say, I would tell you, okay, draw a vertical line. How many times does it hit? You would say twice. So this is not a function. Okay. And I can give you some other examples. I could say, all right, well, how about something like this? And you would say, well, it only a vertical line only hits it one time. So it is a function. I see. Totally. Okay, cool. But if it no. were me, if I were on, on your side of this, I'd probably keep keep uh, sending over questions for us to look at uh, to yes. be able to kind of, kind of work through this as quickly as possible to get you the, the best value here out of yes. your time. Sorry. Um... Right, so there's another one that came in. All right. All right, so this one, this one is uh, a little more pixelated, but it's okay. Um, I appreciate you not just taking pictures with your phone. These, are, these actually are better quality than I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, give the domain and range of the function whose graph is is shown to the right. And again, these this actually means it goes down forever, and this means it goes down forever. Sometimes it's helpful to actually draw that. The domain domain refers to the the inputs or the x values, and and what you're looking for are what are called discontinuities, basically any breaks. And this one does not have any breaks. It's nice and smooth and continuous everywhere. Uh, so. Uh, the domain is all real numbers. There's there's no places where, and, and maybe you heard this back in uh, previous classes, where you can draw it without lifting up your pen or pencil here because there's no no breaks. So in terms of interval notation, and, and this is where it, you may need a bit of help here to actually enter this in, it's parentheses, minus infinity, comma, infinity, close parentheses. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you click in that box, if you haven't used Pearson in a while, um, there'll be some buttons on the bottom to help it kind of helps you to navigate which things to press to be able to get get that input mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Um, and uh, whenever you've got that down, we can go to range next. Got it. So range are, are the outputs or, or what you care about, which are the Y values. So the Y values referring to the Y values in this, in this graph here. So these these go down forever. And, and down forever is is minus infinity. So you can think of of your range as like min to max, low to high, bottom to top, whatever words words you uh, like there. Um, but this does not go up forever. It's it's bounded at the top. There's kind of okay. a max there and a max there. That max looks like it's right at five. And we switch to a bracket because it includes five. It actually touches right at the y value of five there. Over here it's four, but the five is a little bit higher. So this means all the numbers up to and including uh, five for your range. Okay, that's what that bracket means. I was trying, I was just trying to figure that out and it was a little rough in my brain archives. Yes, yes. So that means you include it, include it uh, the parentheses means excludes uh, kind of up to, but not including that point there. Okay. Okay, um, so I have that input, but for some reason it's mad at me. The parentheses look red. Okay. I don't know if that's. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good here. I mean, I would you'd have to share your screen for me able to help you sort of navigate that. But you, they, they just, uh, I believe you can either type in and manually parentheses minus infinity comma five bracket, or they have got a pre-filled button to push. Yeah, could you let me uh, share my screen? Sure. So I'm going to make you co-host here. Uh, please don't kick me out of the meeting. <laughs> oh, geez, no. Yeah. So, so, and just as a reminder, you probably already know this, but when you you share, you get to choose what you share. So just be very careful that you're sharing what you want to share at this okay. point. Okay. Can you see that? 
Yeah, I see that there. Uh, the range is, yeah, that's, that's odd. Um, so go ahead and I guess I would clear that out. Just, just kind of start over um, and click on the more button down there. Uh, yeah, that doesn't help. Okay, uh, let's just try it again. Left parentheses, negative, and then infinity on the left there next to the pi. There it is, comma, five, bracket. Yeah, that's okay. It'll be okay. Okay. All right, so if you want to hit the next, I'll actually be able to snip it from, from here if you're okay with that. Let me exit full screen. All right, yeah, let me, let me snip it this way and... Uh, I will uh, go back to this. All right, so this one, this one requires a bit more work. All right, so we're going to share. Okay, so it says let g of x equals x squared minus three x plus eight. Find the following value, r, g of r plus h. What that means is wherever you see an x, you're gonna substitute in r plus h. Okay. So there's, there's x squared. So you're going to write off to the side here, x, I'm sorry. Let me undo that. r plus h squared instead of the x minus three times r plus h plus eight. Okay. Now, if you were to just put this in here, I don't, I don't actually know if it will take it. We're going to simplify because it, it does want that uh, usually. Uh, but this, the, this is the direction we're going. So the r plus h squared is really r plus h times r plus h. And then you're going to foil that. So you're doing your your first, your outer, your inner, and your last r squared. <laughs> yeah, plus r h plus r h plus h squared. You have to distribute this minus three to both minus three r minus three h plus eight. Okay, and then uh, from here you can combine like terms. So you've got r squared plus two r h plus h squared minus three r minus three h plus eight, and that's what it's looking for in this box here oh my gosh how funny is that yeah okay gotcha let me begin here um, and this is leading you towards what's called the difference quotient which is the basis of taking a derivative which is the first kind of key concept in calculus okay gotcha R squared plus two R H plus A squared minus three R minus three H eight. Okay, I think you should have question four in the chat. All right, let me take a look here. Uh, do you see that? Um, just make sure. It looks like you sent two pictures. Let me just see what we got here. The, the chat is, it's not super efficient. It, it always wants to download it. Uh, is it the classify the following function is even, odd, or neither? Or is yes. it a do? Okay, all right, let me grab that then. Uh, copy. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, so there is a process of doing this um, that would um, involve us doing sort of these, these formulas of f of minus x. Uh, but a, there's a better tool out there. So give me just a moment to pull it up uh, let me, uh, to answer this question. Okay. Uh, so let me get there. All right. So uh, have you ever used Desmos graphing calculator before? Um, some guy online mentioned that to me yesterday. It's extremely helpful. The thing is, though, is you're not always allowed to use it in the class. Um, so it's it's like it's a it's an amazing tool. It's like like what we would want every student to use, but some universities are very antiquated and they're like, you know, we're not we're not going to do that. Are, are you seeing the Desmos? I'm, I'm just making I sure do. you're saying yeah. this. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. So so if the function were even, it would look the same on the left as it does on the right. Meaning like if there was mirror a mirror, image. exactly. And that is not the case here because there's, you know, the, this thing that comes down, there'd be something that comes up. This, this one over here on the right is not over here on the left. Odd 
would be what's called a rotational symmetry. Um, and that's a little bit hard to see here, but I'm gonna do some, maybe, maybe to help out here. So let me have you see this way. Do, do those look the, do they, they look sort of rotated about this mm -hmm. point zero. So that's, that's odd. And there's an algebraic definition, but if you can graph it, you just look for those two things, either it's a mirror image or it looks like it's been rotated about the origin. Okay. And so this one is odd. Okay. Only because you plugged that equation into this site and that's how it graphed it. Uh, the, the graph tells us the, 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 the graph reveals whether it's even or odd. So okay. like, so like, let me show you one that is, that is even. So you, you can see this, this is even because it looks the same on the left and the right, but this one is not even because if you draw that, that line right down the middle, it's not the same on the left as it is the, I'm sorry, the, the right as it is on the left. And, and maybe, maybe you're thinking, okay, well, it is symmetric about this point. It is, but we're looking at it from this perspective, greater than zero. And then what does it look like less than zero? And, and, and that X equals zero is the dividing point. That's your mirror, not, not this other point over here. Uh-huh. Okay. And so I'm trying to give you like, this is a shortcut. This is like, we're not even going to worry about the algebraic definition. We're just going to graph it and see what we see to, yeah. to make the, to determine the answer. And there's a lot of calculus that will do this way. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not proctored or anything, so that's kind of nice. You Great. Know? Great. So yeah. this is a tool I will use regularly. Um, I would encourage you to, to at least, you know, graph one thing over this course, just to, you know, you may find someday you want to graph something and it's really easy to do here. Sure. All right, we're ready for uh, for another question here. Okay. So. Oh, we got odd for that, right? Sorry. Yes, it is odd. Yeah, it is odd. Okay. All right, let me uh, download this next question. I'll open it, and then I will copy, copy, and then I will I will go back to sharing my uh, my other screen here. Okay. okay. Okay, so this is this is exactly what I was talking about. It says without using your calculator, but why would we do that? Let's just let's just graph it and see what it looks like. Okay. okay. There are other ways to do this. Are you okay with that? Like I'm not trying to shortcut your learning, but if if you know, are you okay with us just graphing it and comparing, or do you want to know how to do it otherwise? For now, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Like you would literally take this equation and copy it and paste it into Desmos. Uh, I mean, you have to type it, but yeah, but essentially that's okay. what I'm, that's what I'm going to do here for you. Um, there are other ways to do it, like the sort of traditional approach, but, um, you know, whenever, whenever these online things say, hey, don't do something you should, or without using, you should immediately uh, use it. So you're looking for the graph that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's an odd thing. Um, you're looking for the graph that from the origin is, is moved left and then up. And, and if, you, if you're seeing on the answer space on your screen, I'm looking at answer B as the one that's moved a little bit left and a little bit up. Do you see how, I, yeah. how I'm doing that? Okay. And yeah. I'm, just, I'm just graphing it and comparing to, to what the is to the answers. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Great. Okay. I sent you six in the chat. I'm going to grab you seven right now. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do, if you're looking at this question, it says complete the square and determine the vertex form of the following function. So we're gonna actually graph it first. We're gonna do the, the second part first. So I'm gonna go back. You're, you're probably still seeing uh, Desmos on my side. I'm gonna graph this function, minus five X squared, minus 30 X, minus 42. Um, and what's nice about Desmos is you can click and it, it gives you key features of the graph. Okay. Now, like this one's not super helpful because it's a rounded decimal, same thing over here, but the vertex, the vertex, which is a min or a max, and I'm writing this down in, your, in, in the notes here, it's a min or a max, we have it right here. We, we don't have to do any sort of uh, calculations to figure that out. It's the ordered pair parentheses minus three, comma three. So that second box that you're seeing there, uh, that's 
uh, that's minus three comma three in parentheses. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now this, this completing the square business is a bit more complicated, but maybe you remember this, you can factor out a, uh, a number from every single term. And in this case, it's, it's minus five, but it doesn't work in that last one. Okay, but it does work in the first two uh, here. So if I go x squared plus six, okay, like this, how do I want to do this here with you? Um, I really don't want to go through how to complete the square because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very slow for us. Um, so actually, I will just switch back and we'll do, it, we'll do it the traditional way. All right. Fortunately, there's not really a shortcut to completing the square. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to complete the square, you move the 42, the minus 42 to the other side of the equation. And, and there's this, this empty space, if you're seeing my screen, hopefully. Uh, and then you factor out this, this uh, minus five. Okay, so I've, I've, uh, I've got an empty space here and I've got an empty space here, okay? And then this whole like completing the square, you, this is what's called B and there's a formula. The formula says take B divided by two and put that here. So B divided by two is three. If you were to expand X plus three squared, so I'm gonna do that off to the side here, X plus three times X plus three, X squared plus three X plus three X plus nine, that's foil again, okay? You get X squared plus six X plus nine. So it's just like the previous line, except there's now a nine here. So I'm actually working backwards. If you multiply minus five in to each of these, you get back to the previous line. So minus five times X squared is minus five X squared, minus five times six X is minus 30 X, minus five times nine is minus 45, okay? Mm -hmm. But you have to be fair, you have to share. So, so in this case, you have to move this 45 to the other side as well. You have to do it on both sides. So when you add this up, it's minus three, this minus five comes down. And then you can, you can actually add the three back to both sides. So it becomes plus three, okay? Now, if you didn't understand any of that or it just looked, felt super confusing, uh, what I wanna show you, and I'm gonna, we're gonna go back to Desmos, is that when I graph the completed square, um, you're gonna see it, it'll be exactly the same uh, graph. So um, that, plus three, and you can see how the graphs are overlapping now. So what I, what I was trying to show you before is that there's actually a bit of a guess and check approach that you can do to get the right answer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that, that is the completing the square. So, so what they're looking for in that first box is everything to the right of the equal sign in the red uh, equation here, red oh, line. Wow. Okay, yeah. It rings a bell again. Yeah, it's taught over and over again and then forgotten over and over again. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Negative five X plus three squared plus three. Okay. All right. right. Okay, so you sent over question seven. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Uh, copy. So this is another type of problem where I'm going to just graph it and find the one that is uh, closest to that. Sure. Um, so you're, are you seeing my decimal screen? I am. Okay. Let me keep. So, uh, and if you're not sure where to find something, there's a little keyboard down here, and then it's got all the operators that you, that you would need, and then there's more if you get to functions. Um, this one's not too bad. It's pretty intuitive to use. Um, you're probably using a lot of software and other aspects, you know, your work and stuff like this, I think is actually pretty easy to, you know, to use. It's, um, so you're just looking for the one that looks like this graph. So uh, you're looking uh, between A, B, C, and D. You're looking for the one that's kind of uh, moved uh, to the right and then down. Looks like letter C is the best match. Okay, that. sorry, one second here. Okay, and 
Yep, say looks good. Okay. I think I sent eight. Yep, I'm gonna grab. Just gonna keep going. All right, uh, so question eight, we'll start next with, let's see here, open. All right, so question eight is another graphing problem. Um, I'm gonna skip that for the moment. Let's see what question nine looks like. Um, another graphing problem. So uh, yeah, let me get a, let's go to 10 here, see if there's anything new. All right, yeah, we'll look at we'll look at 10 here. Um, next. All right, so um, if you're seeing my screen, it says the given graph is the graph of polynomial function. Give the possible values for the degree of the polynomial and give the sign plus or minus for the leading coefficient here. So uh, you can actually zoom in on this graph by hitting the magnifying glass if you need to. Um, there's a couple of ways to determine uh, the degree of the polynomial. That's the, that's the thing that we need right now. The degree is based on the number of turning points. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six turning points, TP for short, and the polynomial degree is the number of turning points plus one. So it's it's seven as a minimum, okay? And, and you're like, well, hey, Matthew, there's two answers to seven. So the truth is that there's actually could be more turning points, but they're in what's called the complex domain that you don't care about. But it's, it's any um, multiple of two after seven. So it could be like nine, 11, so on, okay? Hmm. So this is, this is the correct answer here. Um, the other thing you can you can know is that if if it starts high and ends low or starts low and ends high, there's shapes of these polynomials that you you would learn in your your college algebra class, and you would know right away that this is an odd degree because of the fact that it started high and ended low, and that way this is the only possible answer here. Even degree functions they either start high and end high or they start low and end low. These are even degree. Okay. Um, um, and it's yep. just, it's just, it's just remembering that, right? Totally. And then the sign of the leading coefficient is, um, uh, in this case, it's negative. So there's like four of these graphs that you would know. And if you like, weren't sure you could just go to Desmos and type in like negative X to the seventh, and you would get a graph that looked like this, which matches yours. So that would help you to to be able to answer this. And that's why the Desmos is so cool because it actually allows you to do a little bit of like guessing and checking on this. So probably just says negative there. Um, not really, not really sure on that. So I'm gonna actually just stop the recording for a moment here and just, just uh, I guess maybe be a little more, oh, let me just do 